So in a couple of the previous videos, uh, I showed one, what information to get in a psychiatric interview, and then two, uh, the observation or some of the um, nuances of a mental status exam, what the clinician can observe for when getting that information. And so now in this video, you're sort of trying to put those pieces together into this analysis or assessment or formulation to uh, what you think is going on with the individual and why. The aim of this part of the assessment or formulation is to gather all that data that you received when talking with the patient and sort of describing it in a way that makes sense of what you think is going on. So important things to put here are the um, stuff which is relevant because not all the information you're going to get is relevant to what's going on. Also, you want to put um, your prognosis or how you think the patient will do based on the information provided. You also want to um, make a comment about their safety risk. Is there a chance they're going to be suicidal or homicidal? Um, so it's called the biopsychosocial formulation. Bio for the biological reasons, uh, psycho for psychological and social. And you can write uh, a few sentences about each uh, section in the formulation or assessment. The biological, you could sort of uh, infer by the term what it's about. It's about what happens in the body. And so first of all, you want to take a look at the medications. Are there any of the medications that the patient is on that could be causing them to feel depressed or feel anxious uh, or feel, you know, whatever it is they're going through. Uh, some commonly medications that can have psychiatric side effects like prednisone is a steroid that can lead to anxiety, mood changes, irritability, psychosis, etc. cetera. Uh, anticholinergic medications, basically medications that work um, in this mechanism uh, can cause confusion or altered sensorium, especially in the elderly people. Uh, opioids and benzodiazepines can have uh, its risks for addiction or abuse, but also in older people or certain vulnerable populations can cause mood changes or mood swings. The medical conditions can also play a role here. Uh, for example, in obesity, just like it can lead to uh, medical problems like high cholesterol, diabetes, etc. There's also an association with psychological problems or mental health problems, including increased chance for anxiety or depression. Uh, if someone has had a head trauma like concussions or head injuries, that can uh, lead to uh, memory or cognitive impairment, also more likely that they have attention deficit disorder. Other components of the history that are biological include drugs. Um, each drug sort of has its own um, possible effects associated with it, alcohol, cannabis, caffeine, methamphetamine, heroin, and the list goes on and on. Family history is important because many mental health conditions can run in families, especially anxiety can run in families, mood disorders such as depression or bipolar, addictions, uh, schizophrenia, and there are others as well. Psychologically what goes on, it, primarily it's their, the person's view of themselves, or the view of the world, um, or their surroundings, um, etc. So, Important to assess here is their trauma history. Has there been any physical, emotional, or sexual abuse that can affect their psychological makeup? Um, do they have any self-esteem or self-image issues? Um, what's their ability to formulate relationships? Um, any patterns uh, they've had in relationships, work, or school that uh, have been impaired or um, anything that tend to repeat itself over time? that could suggest something psychologically that's going on with them. What are their coping mechanisms? How do they deal with stress or anxiety or mental health stuff? Is it healthy coping, like uh, maybe they uh, find a support system or a church group or do some reading, or is it something unhealthy? Do they resort to using drugs or do they yell or do they um, inflict pain on themselves? Um, also, what sort of intellect or development have they done over time? Have they um, reached their developmental milestones normally? Um, if not, um, they could consider maybe there's something uh, biological there, medical there, maybe it's even something psychological. Socially, there's a lot of factors that can uh, play a role 
and someone's uh, mood and uh, thoughts, anxiety, etc. Housing, finances, their education, their work, their friendships, or family support, legal issues like court problems, custody battles can all affect one's uh, mental health. Uh, any military involvement and if they were in the military, were they in combat? Uh, were they discharged honorably or dishonorably? Um, what do they do in the military? Did they begin using substances in the military? Were working overnight, um, etc. Was there ever um, adult protective services or child protective services contacted? Um, did they uh, grow up uh, in a religious or spiritual community? Uh, are they currently religious or spiritual? I think this is a very important uh, question to ask and know because it can really help to understand their protective factors of hurting themselves or suicide or even killing others because oftentimes it is against uh, the religious belief system. And also are there any cultural factors that are playing a role in what brings the patient today? If um, it's a normal issue, a normal thing that happens in their culture, then maybe it's not something that a psychiatrist uh, should be uh, trying to address. So you can um, estimate their risk of suicide. Do they have low, uh, medium, or high risk of suicide based on um, some factors that we know can be considered with suicide here, although we'll probably uh, generate a, a separate video or talk uh, to talk about this because it's such an important um, aspect of mental health. Now that you have gathered all this information through the clinical interview, you've observed the patient through the helps of the mental status exam, and you've broken it down into biological, psychological, social components of their life, um, you can sort of summarize um, what is going on um, in the assessment and develop a, a plan of action of how to treat uh, the patient for their ailments and uh, help their quality of life and help them reach their goals of what they want to achieve.